Welcome. This is the January 3rd, 2024 Open ZFS production user call. And we have people trickling in, but so far we have Daniel Stu, Katya, Levi, Tibalt, if I pronounce that right, and now John D. And others will trickle in. I am Michael. And today, if anything, we have a demo of a tool that Daniel's been working on. So Daniel, go ahead and introduce that and go ahead and share your screen when the time is right. Sure. Thanks, Michael. Um, so, yeah, so I was, uh, I run my own small, you know, fleet, private cloud and uh, client servers and my own uh, personal servers. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of different uh, replication suites out there, Sanoid, Syncoid and ZREPL and a few others in the, in the uh, FreeBSD base, I think. Um, and I tried, uh, you know, I tried, I tried all of them, um, but I'm looking for, for a few things. First of all, snapshot management wasn't a big deal for me. Um, you know, I just didn't, uh, let's see, what am I going to end up sharing here? My email. Oh, hello. I'll switch to this. Here we go. Yeah, meeting and um, so, like <laughs> so, so the number one thing is, is something that, that works in FreeBSD base. If I set up a brand new server and I have to install a ton of software to get it working or to set up a policy or something, um, it's, it's not going to work. It has to work right out of the box. Um, and it shouldn't re replicate the, the needs of, of base tools. Like something that was interesting to me about Syncoid is it does really simplify a lot of, a lot of things, but there's a dash dash hyphen for anything. Well, if we're going to have a million switches for our replication tool, then we really should just be piping ZFS send to ZFS receive. Uh, you're sort of reinventing the wheel if you have to learn a new tool and then learn all of the different uh, the different things about it. Um, and then the other thing I wanted is that for it to be simpler than um, various alternatives out there. So for policy-based backups, I basically wanted one snapshot per line. And then the, you know, the replication tool is going to figure out where to plop that um, with, of course, smart overrides and stuff like that. Um, and then for recovery, I added here, uh, I don't know if uh, that shows up on the screen, but can be safely performed while drunk at 3 a.m. on New Year's Day. Uh, ZFS replications can be really tricky. You can make lots of mistakes. There's various snapshot names. You can be totally overwhelmed with, you know, thousands of snapshots running down your screen if you handle large you know, large fleets with with lots of different snapshots. So we need some, I wanted something to really dumb that down. Now, again, ZREPL, um, Sanoid, they're policy-based systems. You can do anything. You program each individual snapshot exactly how you want it. That's not what I need at all. I just want to collect everything and put it in a in a clearer place. So I wrote this, this Zelta suite to do this. And it was basically at the very start, a couple of tools that would you know, just very quickly uh, check the, do the diff between, between two um, sets of snapshots, a source and a target, and then, and then replicate it. But then I decided, well, this is a little bit different than what's out there. So I'm gonna publish it to GitHub. And in the last two weeks for my Christmas present, I added a bunch of features and refactored it. So it's, it's you know, it's starting to become somewhat legible and, uh, you know, I'm gonna, request some comments from the community. Um, so I feel like I fit everything that I wanted to do with it. I have a matcher, I have a replicator. Um, you know, there's no requirements. You don't have to install it on the place that you're taking snapshots from or even putting snapshots on. Uh, you have to install absolutely nothing. Um, it helps you align the snapshot names. And by default, so this is something new. By default, now ZXFer always replicates everything, which drove me crazy. That was that's no longer in, in development, but I used to use ZXFer before this. Um, and but by default, we don't copy intermediate snapshots. There's an option not to do that. And um, ZFSN dash capital R uh, always does that. 
So if you want to replicate a, a complex set of snapshots, you always have to get the entire history of them also. Now, Oracle, Oracle ZFS had a ZFS send dash lowercase r. Um, I almost named this tool ZFS send minus lowercase r because it was so helpful. I just want to get from point A to point B and not get the entire history of every snapshot. And boy, is this stressful when a, when a host is starting to uh, crash and you're moving, you're migrating a system to a new one, and then you have to get stuff from 2019. It's, it's uh, terrifying. Um, so as I've been discussing, I want it to be simpler than alternatives out there. So one snapshot per line, and that's it. And then, uh, you know, for recovery, there's a double check. So no more mistakes. And then we added auto retry, flexible backup naming convention. So ZREPL lets you add the host name. I thought that would be a fun thing to do. And other prefix, other prefix, prefixes. Um, and then a couple other things here. You know, backup overrides and um, backup depth, uh, push mode. So you could do pushes, though. I do recommend for anybody running backups, do pull mode <laughs> if you can. It's a good security practice. So it looks like this. So let's say you don't have ZFS snapshot or some other snapshotting tool running on your computer. This, by the way, is a great way to set up a snapshot policy. <laughs> Daniel? So, Can you drop yeah. those in chat as you go? Just some of the uh, drop syntax, because once it's on your screen, I can't grab it. Yeah, you bet. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. So I'm going to drop these into chat. How do I get to chat? Uh, it should be a floating thing. They make everything float and disappear on you. Um, floating, yes. Disappearing, yes. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I or in the chat. Google Doc if you have it handy, which I can drop in there. Um, if it's okay, I can do it after the yeah. after the demo because because these are actually um, just for your consideration. I created uh, Zelta tests, which describes in order all of these Sweet. demands that that I'm talking about. So Zelta tests shows you uh, each example, but I'll, I'll drop the highlights into the document so you know. ZFS snapshot minus R, the name of the the, the name of the um, the data set, and then the date like that will give you really nice, you know, dated dated snapshots. Now, now this replication tool doesn't care about the date. It's just going to use the it's it's just going to sort by creation. So it's going to use the actual the dates of the snapshot in the in the tool. So this becomes less important. I use ZFS snap and it uses ex basically exactly this format with the with the top and bottom. Um, but we're but the but the tools I wrote are double checking the GUIDs, making sure that it's not named name the same thing, but they're actually different, um, you know, different snapshots. And it's it's using the creation date to actually compare the time and match them. Um, so yeah, I'll add some of these uh, little tricks into the doc. Um, okay, so that's floating on the top, so I can't see it. So I'm going to make a couple. All right, so I made a couple of a couple of different snapshots here to Zroot user here. And Zmatch looks like this, Zmatch, uh, the source. Now we're just checking out the last label here. So I think that's pretty intuitive. So sort of our syncing in that way. So Zroot user to Zelta, that's the second pool. I have a second pool called Zelta, Zelta user, and it's going to compare them and tell you for each point in all of its children where it matches what the match one is, because this could be different. You know, if you add, add or remove child data sets, that changes. And a lot of the, you know, a lot of the um, replicate, CFS replication suites out there don't know how to deal with this. So it'll check, make sure that all of them have a match. Usually it's going to be the same date, but sometimes it's not. And then it's going to tell you the mount point and the source's latest version here. So then this gets piped with a different format. It doesn't pipe with this exact format, but it pipes it right into um, uh, the ZPoll tool, which runs with exactly the same thing. So remember when I was talking about running this drunk, 
<laughs> running this tired, you know, the same tool that you use to run the match is the same, the same command line arguments that you're going to use to do the job. Bada bing. Um, we're good. And now it's going to return that the, that the target has the latest source snapshot. Now, those are the two main tools. And then the third tool is a policy manager, which is called, which is called Delta, which, which runs through. Now, we had some problems in the, <laughs> in the, in the testing because uh, my, you know, so my, my client server names are in there. And I tried to today before the call reproduce and replicate the systems without all the server names. So I wish I could blur this or something for, <laughs> for everybody else. Um, but I'm going to show you examples of the, of the output and then some examples of the, uh, um, oh, actually, well, I have, I have the output saved with, you know, with the uh, dev name. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you that. So here is, let's see, I'm gonna go back to, here's our default config. So now ignore, ignore this stuff at the top because you really only need one or two of these things. For me, I use retry uh, two because if it fails to replicate, because of ZFS bugs, including a ZFS bug that I found while testing this software. Um, and I'll tell you about that after this presentation. Um, you need to specify a backups route if you don't wanna specify the target for each one. And I set retry to two. So if it fails, it tries again. So it's going to store all the snapshots in the form tank backup slash whatever the bottom element uh, data set name is. Now this makes a lot of sense for me because I name all of my data sets in a unique way because they're the names of my VMs or the, they're the names of the, the host pool and they keep host pools unique. So I understand that that's not what everybody wants. So we added a host prefix. So if you want zroot, it'll be, uh, uh, you know, the name of the host dev one dot uh, slash and then the zroot. So that's that's one way one way to do it, and then you can also add the prefixes to uh, to go up the parent. So that basically the parent data set names will be appended, or, or sorry, prefixed to the um, to the data set, set target names. So we have lots of different options there. So you can keep the pool name in there. You can make your prefix ninety nine, so it has the the whole tree and so on. But again, what I use is just this backup route and retry. Oh, actually I use intermediate also because I want intermediate data sets, even though I didn't make that the default because the idea is to make it fast if it's running on a server without a configuration, um, I keep that as well. And then it looks like this. It's just, you know, basic YAML, the site name, which is basically a backup set. This could be anything, you could have just one. And then the host name with a colon and the target name with a dash, that's it. And then it loops over all of those, it backs them up. And if there's a failure, it retries. Um, I realize this is small, so I'm gonna zoom in. And here's an example with a target override. So the source target is host2 at mynet or dot mynet. And then the, the source snapshot is pull to jail Linux. And then the target snapshot is tank jail Linux. It'll automatically deal with parent creating parents and so on. And yep, you can even add user at host name um, in the form. It, it, it can recognize and, and make use of that. And you can do that on, on either side. Um, and for people who are doing push, uh, push replications, you got that option too. So it uh, pretty much handles, you know, I hope more than 80% of what most people need. And of course, if you need a policy snapshot manager, Xanoid if you like uh, Perl and ZREPL if you don't, I guess. <laughs> What's ZREPL written in? Is that the go one? I think it's, oh, I thought it was, I thought it was uh, born. Well, there's, there's 
Christian has one that's pretty new and popular that's Go based, and the name is really confusing. So it's like Zeta Repl and Z Repl. So I get them confused all the time. So oh, yeah. My bad. Uh, Let's see what it's written in. No, Christian Schwartz. I think that's his. <clears throat> That's th that's this one, isn't it? Yeah, I think And it's so. in Go? I How do I could be wrong. Is there a GitHub edit on? Oh, edit the page. <laughs> How about the code? Um, oh, whoops. No, no, not your fault. It's that I, my, uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, MIT, uh, we like that. Boom, 96.5% yeah, Go. <clears throat> yeah, Go, right. Okay. Yeah, I tried. I tried this out in. It's been around for a while, right? Maybe in two years. Maybe now. in twenty twenty, or maybe there was an older version in twenty twenty. Because yeah, it says four years old. So, oh. um, yeah. So this is this is a, a great policy based uh, replication tool. I think it does snapshots also. I, I just found that I I'm trying to take a more Unix philosophy, a la well being a Unix person. And try to keep each tool uh, minimal, but anyway, those are those are great options. And then of the test, oh wait, I can show. Yeah, I can show what the. So the testing, yeah. So the testing um, site has this th these three lines, and that's the minimal configuration that you can have. So you specify a site. Uh, host name. Oh, and if it's local host, it obviously doesn't SSH anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then a source, a source and target to test. Um, oh, and then it gets, and then it gets a little more complicated and does the, um, and my little test script here does a test with all of basically all of the options set and replicate new. And then does the same thing again with a, with a depth um you know by by checking a depth limiter so there there might be situations where you know you have a lot of stuff up top that you care about maybe etsy and then you don't care about the stuff deeper down so there's a there's a depth limiter option and then our outputs let's see yeah so the outlook output looks like this. It tells you the site and site's probably the wrong name. What I should have called this was sort of a backup, a backup set. The goal for having the, the separate site names here is, um, is to make it so that this can run multi-threaded and it'll download from each. Cause you obviously, if you're downloading from one site, it doesn't make sense to download from two hosts on that site. So that's why I added a third tier here, which is which is the backup site. You can make it default and then have all the hosts in the same uh, backup set. But uh, yeah, and then it'll it'll go through them over and over again. And if you have a problem, which you'll see in the first output due to the CFS bug that I found, uh, you'll see a little X. And then if you have retry, it'll it'll retry and it'll tell you the host and uh, data set name. Tell you how much it got, how many streams, and how much time. Now, this also takes raw output that you can feed into a network monitor like Nagios or Zabbix or something like that. So, um, you know, I'm adding a I'm adding a hook for that soon, and uh, yeah, so we should be able to take our hundreds of backups and then chart them. So you, you it'll be a lot easier to see. Uh, changes in problems, things that clients are doing that are surprising to you, and and so on. But uh, graphing this is the uh, is the next step after all this. Um, and yeah, it's just a check if it succeeds. X if there's an error, and it'll throw the error. Um, usually, not this time. And uh, and then an empty set say, signal uh, symbol if it uh, there's nothing to nothing to copy. So yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty comprehensive. It does, uh, yeah, every, every all the features that I wanted from all those different places, I stuck it in my own system with same defaults, and uh, hopefully somebody finds it useful. 
Uh, maybe tell us about that bug before we jump into audience questions. And I've got, of course, a bunch of questions. Oh, yeah, you bet. Um, actually, I can really easy dem easily demonstrate it. I thought that it was a problem with uh, dropped privileges with ZFS. So Zelta is also um, uh, expects not to run as root, which is a which is something that I hit a wall at three years ago with some of the other systems. Uh, so what was happening is um, when I would run a ZFS create uh, to to add a parent data set as the as the drop privilege user, I was it was creating the top the top level of of a data set when using dash up. So CFS create dash up. And I would do, I would create that. And then I'd want to create all the parents because I want people to be able to add the host name or, or other prefixes to the, to the um, list of snapshots. So here is the snapshot. And it would work, but when, when our privileges were dropped, it didn't work. It would only create the top level that it could get to. So I'd have to run it one, two, three, four times to get it created. And we give an error that it can't create, the direct can't create the mount point. Well, of course it can't create the mount point. I didn't want it to create the mount point because I said dash you. So, and, and I'm sure this is a bug because Yeah, you is pretty clearly do not mount the newly created file system. However, it only did that, it only applied the dash u flag to the final one in the in the dash uh, the dash p flag. So it only applies the dash u to one data set at a time when I'm trying to create all of the non-existent parent data sets. And it mounted them so, in the course of that? What's that? Or it tried to mount all the intermediary ones? So it did create, yeah, it created them, but it also created and mounted them, yeah, okay. which it's not supposed Goodness. to do. Yeah, no, thank you. It, <laughs> I, it very specifically said, don't do that. Dash U means do not mount and it's super mounted. Yeah, but it created all of them. Now, it'll die on the way if it's an unprivileged user. Right. So if I do, let's see, I think I have to do ZFS allow dash U, what is it? Create mount point. Oops. Oh, and then I have to say where. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Yeah, here we go. So that's still the behavior of it. Yeah, you it's, it's, that? it's the same. Yeah, it's the same behavior. And let's see, did I, I gave it the right, create mount point. What else did I need? I might, I might, I might. Oh, right, you. Hmm. There. Wait, did it stop? Well, I might be missing I might be missing a permission, but I I was able to I was able to replicate. I mean, it's the same thing that you saw as root. So you can you can see the bug works because it mounted everything except for the final tag. Hmm. Um, but I got it to do it where it was X plus elements and it would it would it would error for X plus elements and then it would succeed. Because it would keep on creating the creating the mount oh, points it's down the, one. the tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. So Ooh. if I said, yeah, so Zelta would work if I set it for retry equals 10, then it would just recreate the uh the data sets down the tree until it until it was made. Now that's only usually gonna be a problem the first time uh you you know you you encounter this with the reduced privileges. What did what did I have? Create mount point. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll have to figure out what 
what she could do to to create to create this this specific behavior but you can still see the um yeah you can still see that the that this is not mounted and it did and root even mounted these even though we passed a dash you hmm so do you think that's a bug or a specific behavior and there should be a different flag for do not mount the intermediary works I think it's a bug. I think dash u implies that the that there's several several reasons why you wouldn't want them uh why you wouldn't want them mounted. Um yeah. Oh, I, I can't I can't think but... of yeah, I can't think I can't think of an intuitive reason why. I mean it, I I mean I know exactly when the code where it's you know where it's happening because I asked Clara Systems to to tell me. <laughs> And they did. So it's not, it's, it's supposed to be passing a dash U at a particular routine that it's not. Got it. Cool. Well, so yeah, minor, but that's good. Oh, and I, I have another one that I'm curious about, but I can't reproduce it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but there was, but I've had situations where I do a ZFS receive, and rather than and if the if the target data set didn't exist, rather than give me an error, it would it would uh, it would stall, it would uh, yeah, it would just hang. I wonder if anybody's seen that, and what criteria would cause it? Because I I did it today a few times and it was fine. I would get through an error. I did ZFS receive to the wrong directory, to like a sub. Uh, a sub data set or misspelled sub data set, but it would just hang, which of course is really dangerous in a backup process that relies on everything moving. Anyway, I'll, I'll let the audience if I can. ask and answer because I've got a whole bunch of questions, but please, everyone, you know, Stu, John, Levi, gotcha. First off, good job. No, oh, thanks. That's, that's been, you just solved a bunch of annoyances that I've partially solved over the years. So I'm anxious to go try it and see if I can just replace a bunch of crap I've done. <laughs> it's like, okay, here, credit Daniel. Yeah. yeah, I might need to tune it up on the way, but I'll definitely uh, oh, be doing that also. That's the, that's the other part. It's like, I'm, <laughs> I, I am great at providing feedback. Yes. Excellent. I love it. Yeah. You know, number one is it'd be great if it was JSON instead of YAML or. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to do. So the, the reason why I went with that was, was literally length. Um, so, so length was number one and number two is I'm using, since I'm using awk, it was a little bit easier, a little bit easier to parse, but I actually started with, uh, with, with JSON and, and, you think that would that would improve the the usability for most people? Yeah, it's it. I I have <clears throat> team members that have problem with spaces. Oh, and okay. YAML <laughs> format is I spend more than enough time going. Did you check your YAML configs? Um, right. So that's my and you know it's I think like a database. So JSON presents out a little bit cleaner um, right it would also it would also have the ability it would, it would also grant me the ability to add more overrides without uh without making a base config ugly yeah. so that was the other reason i was thinking json json would be would be better and then i looked at ucl and i was like well ucl is compatible with yaml also so yeah yeah it was it was just the quickest thing to parse so i guess i would have to write like a little awk parser but i've done it before it's it's you know a few lines um and and would be easy to it would be easy to do um and, and most anybody that really cares about json is going to have jq installed anyway so right that's right as a assumed tool if it if jq exists run it in json if it doesn't run it in yaml right on i like it that's that's perfect and it would solve yeah that and all I would have to do is if it's yeah if it's JSON stream it into stream it into that, and we could add you know we could add additional host options for the JSON folks. 
And and you know what? There aren't any. I don't. I think that all the other tools are either YAML or any. So, I, I, I think, I think I, I've been complaining to the ZFS guys about JSONing output since I started. So, oh, Clara's yeah. working on that. Fortunately, yeah. knock on wood. And I assume JSON would help plug into other people's existing stuff. So that, well, that would help and, adoption. And it also helps solve some of the monitoring things as well, because you can graphene it and really quickly, you know, having those data outputs. Hey, how granular do you want it? Well, I want it to the millisecond and, you know, or to the byte versus, hey, here's one meg versus 1.00003 terabytes. Whatever. Right. All right. So IO and yeah, have a yeah, have a environment or a flag or an auto detect that it wants JSON everywhere. And that, that would that would solve yeah, that would solve yeah, that would definitely that would definitely make the um the graphing that I want to do easier for sure. That is the correct output result for for that. All right. Oh, that's, that's going back to the start with the end in mind. Yeah. Is graphing yeah. what's graphs? What do graphs want? <laughs> what yeah. do graphs right. want? All right. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna change the so there's a there's a pipe language. It passes a pipe environment variable between the between the tools, and then it outputs it as just a row of numbers. So I'll change that to a row of JSON and then uh, and then we're made in the shade, I think. Yep. And then you can feed it into a database natively for querying later. If yeah. you do that for, you know, if you've got thousands of, you know, multi-tenant systems, that's the only way to keep track of it after day three. Right. Nice. Thanks for the feedback. Other questions before I launch? Uh, just a simple comment. Uh, it was nice to hear him talk about uh, issuing a pull to get the data sets. Um, as he mentioned, it's a it's a security issue, and uh, eventually you'll get hit by it. Yeah, I don't even. I mean, the the risks of having the the utility run as root are probably fairly small uh, if your if your backup server is fortified. But the question I want to ask to a lot of the people that write replication tools is. Why? Why do you want me to be root? There's no, there's no reason for it at all. Um, if it sees a, if it sees an error that there's a, there's a permission or a, or a particular flag. All right, admins need to keep track of some of those. We might miss some, uh, some ZFS flags, but you know that's another thing that you should be backing up. That's just as far as I'm concerned, just another, you know, another part of the backup. But the backup tool doesn't need to run as root. There's just no reason for it. Amen. And just to be clear, he's also saying for the pull replication, because yeah, you're you're you don't rely entirely on the origin because maybe it's uh I don't know, been intruded. Right. Yeah. I don't want to know anything about the 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 origin except for the fact that it has a snapshot that's newer than what's on the backup server. Are you you collectively ever having the receiving backup server issue over say SSH, the snapshot command. So it's also in control of snapshotting or is that purely at the um, source? I think it should be done at the source, but it seems like I'm, I, I, I think that, I mean, I think people want these managed systems to do it all, but I think it makes more sense to manage snapshots on the source. So I have ZFS snap installed, ZFS snap version two, installed on my on my backup servers and they just it just runs yeah. in a cron that's cool. you know just snapshots before before it runs i think that's i think that's good and then you know there's there is a very quick and dirty z port um uh tool in the uh in the in the repo that just you know the only way you're going to be sure is if you scan all the snapshots and look at the dates look at the creation dates to make sure that they're up to date you have to do that on the on the backup server, um, 
So you're going to find out real fast if there's a there's a problem with the snapshots. But I don't think, I don't know. I think that that's the job of the host server. Cool. What OSs have you tried this on? Just FreeBSD. <laughs> I <laughs> I've tried I've tried FreeBSD and I've tried uh, and and I've tried a number of different Linuxes as sources, but I haven't. You know, will we have a knock versus gawk uh, conflict? We we shall see. Probably not. Um, I did I did opt to use the uh, the SysTime uh, edition in awk that was added in 2019, which is a little new. So I added it. So there's a 2019 FreeBSD feature in in knock that was added, uh, and it would not work with the compiled generic version of one true walk. It will work with the FreeBSD based version. That is an easy fix and I might fix it um, just so that it's pure, uh, you know, pure knock or or whatever. But um, so you see anyway, my point well, there. cool, cool. And yeah, like I, I tried ZX for on a Mac and Alan Jude found that, oh, you're right. The, the date format's a little different. It just broke there. So it was a simple fix, but yeah, there are some not so obvious issues that can arise. Yeah. Um, question on if you're potentially colliding with a data set that's dirty and been mounted and written to by some administrator that you forgot about. Is it uh, relying on the I thought you'd OS never to ask. fail or is it checking the written property? I I thought I thought you would never ask. Um so so for written it will uh it will let it'll it'll fail. It'll It'll let the OS fail. However, for the situation where you you have colliding snapshots, so either a newer snapshot on this on the yep. on the target on the on the machine you're running from, and then or a different the, the same snapshot name, uh, it'll it'll check the GUI, GUID and it'll tell you furiously about that issue. Okay, so it'll warn you and exit out. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I get there's definitely it would be trivial to check for, um, for any new data written since since the snapshot and and fail out without an attempt. So, what? Why do you think that that would that look before you leap uh, would be helpful? Uh, always in everything, all the time, looking before you leap in general. But uh, well, I'm a Python guy, so I don't know. If I agree with that. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, I, I, think, I ask forgiveness later. I personally think the written property is the one of the few single greatest things in ZFS. It's just like x-ray vision into like, okay, where do we stand? Well, we can run our sync for three hours to determine where we stood at some random time in the last three hours. Or we ask ZFS, like, where do we stand? Like, here we are. <laughs> it's amazing. It is magical. And, uh, I we can talk separately about when that should possibly be used as a snapshot criteria, but still, I think it's telling us what we need to know. Let's listen. That's all. That's just me. So, and you 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 say that the snapshot doesn't have to replicate at all if it hasn't been written. Like that that could be an option. No, I, it, I don't. Oh well, there are a few topics there, but one is it's a one criteria for uh oh, this is a dirty destination. Don't write. Don't try be careful. To replicate. Yeah. And if it's yeah. three kilobytes, maybe someone had a time on and happened to look at it and it should have been you know, not mounted or something. But if you see like 30 gigs there, it's like, oh, wait, uh, something went very wrong. Alert the boss. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just saying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for you... sure, I'll do that. I'll do that check for incoming. For sure. That's that's worth it. Cool. Um, so you've got SSH supported. Have you looked at, say, SSH auth and then Netcat or from Ash Gokhale? He's had Via Millipede out there for some time, which I'll set, drop a link here. Uh, yeah. That does some super clever parallel niftiness. It sure, it sure does. Okay, theory. you've looked at uh, it. You've heard of it. Great. Uh, here, for so, those who haven't heard of it, go Ash. Yeah. So the, so the, um, so yes, the, the previous, the, Prior to refactoring, I had a oh god, which was it? SoCat or MBuffer? I forget. One of the oh, streaming yeah. things, and Netcat 
and stuff like that. And it is, it's a wonder. It is honestly, it's, it's great. It's so fast. It's so good. And then like the lightest, the lightest breeze flowing through the circuits will cause that sucker to just break. And via millipede is twice as fragile. Ah, oh, um, good to know. It's, I, I mean, they need, if, if there was a VM there, I wish there was a VMLP that was like a little bit tougher, but that's, that's like, it does, it's, it's great. I mean, I have, I have a number of, I mean, my data centers are, you know, it's, it's BGP, whichever way the wind blows, but, but the, but I, but I do have several clients that have kind of slow circuits and multiple links, which made via millipede a dream. It was great. It was improving, you oh. know. Okay. Improving my time plus t uh, A plus B, you know, uh, uh, to the, you know, to the target, which was great. But I just, I, I don't know what it is. SSH, I get the least number of failures for, and I don't understand why. I don't. So I use, I use Z, uh, I, sorry, I use SSH with, with one of the quicker compression options, uh, or, or no compression because it does dash C anyway. Um, and then I, I race those, but, uh, and then, and then the, the faster encryption options as right. well. Right. Uh, that, that's what I was thinking of. What, what is it? The AS, the, I, I forget. Ah, uh, what about resumable send? Solve all those problems right there. Hypothetically. Yeah, Z Repl has resumable send. So if I want to say that I'm feature complete with the with the big boys, then I definitely need to get that. That would be pretty minor to do an off. It would actually be that'd be awesome. Super easy. Yeah. And on the small that stuff, be... who cares? On the big stuff, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like, oh right. I'm going back to the office to get that seed of the eight terabytes and then bring it back again because oops, we oops, oops, you know. So yeah. 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 So I do wonder about cleaning up. Well, no, I guess it's I guess it's fine. Like cleaning up after it could be a little a little more maintenance. So I feel like now I need some tools. Like, well, ZFS Snap has tools to do to do to help do rollbacks and stuff. So it it tries to do it tries to take the same approach that I do with with sort of you know simple you know do this except do it recursively when it normally doesn't and stuff like that. So if a snap does that. So I, I might, I might want to add a tool or two to the suite to, to help deal with conflicts like that. And how do you dig yourself out? Cool. All right. So I'm adding a written check and I'm adding. Uh, if recovery. only if you think it's appropriate, but that's sort of my leap look before you leap because having the os fail you might not know what return value you'll get or who who knows how gracefully it will fail just saying yeah and that's that's true i mean it's 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 definitely challenging to deal with all the potential exceptions so yeah why not on that point uh in earlier not earlier this year uh last year experimenting with uh, native encryption the return value exit failure codes on the receive were not really helpful. They were mm -hmm. stunningly unhelpful such that, okay, I know something went wrong. Yeah, well, not a clue what. Such that as you branch out into say encryption support, et cetera, uh, the more checks you can do, I think the more sane you'll stay because at least you're yeah. under some control of what you, you know could have gone wrong. Just saying, just saying. You mentioned Z-Port. What was that? Oh, it's just, it just, it's it's a five second script that craps out the um, uh, the output to Slack. Can I, can I like share a picture or do I have to share my screen again? Uh, you can share a window. So Z-Port's one of yours because I'm sitting here trying to find it on FreshBooks. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, the, in, in my, yeah, in my repo. Got it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it just says, you know, what's, yeah, what's up to date and what's not. So oh, which, which ones support? are, 
Yeah, so it okay. just shoots a status report with a list of the snapshots underneath that backup root directory. So everything targets a specific backup root directory. 